Before we start today's video, if you guys would like to join my Discord server, link will be in the description and will also be in a pinned comment. So if you'd like to join, then check out there. Anyway, into the review. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is the Audi S1, and it's basically the S version of the standard A1. Now we all know the A1 to be the basic car within the Audi lineup. You know, A1, A2, which is no longer here, A3, A4, A5, etc, 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 you get the gist here. But either way, this is a sporty version of that car, just like S3, S4, blah, 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 blah. And so this is the smallest and the most basic version of all those cars I just mentioned here. But anyway, you could get this car as this three door that I have here, or you could get it as a five door. Now, this 5 door, just like the S3 5 door and the RS3 5 door, is known as the Sport Back. Get what I did there with the slides? I sure hope so, otherwise that is a waste of time and effort. But either way, let's get into the review. So when it comes to the exterior of the Audi S1, I really like it. So the front looks sporty and happy at the same time. A bit like it's too happy to see me, which is a bit odd, but it does give it sporty vibes. Obviously the grille has changed to make it look a lot sporty and to let more air within the intercooler and the radiator because there's obviously a bigger engine, bigger power, etc, etc, etc. And obviously the bumper has changed as well and you've got the little S1 badge as well which obviously adds a little bit of flair. When it comes to the new A1, let's forget about S for a second, it has this weird fake grille hanging on the top there. Now it's not just the A1 that has this, pretty much a lot of modern Audis have it and frankly it makes the car look like it has a monobrow. Now the S1, which doesn't exist for this new generation, it obviously doesn't have a monobrow because it doesn't exist, so thank god for that. But the A1 still suffers from this and frankly it's not good. So I give a point to the old A1 slash S1 for that. When it comes to the side, you get 3 doors and 5 doors like I mentioned. The 3 door does offer a bit more sporty looks, because that's just how it works really. So it does look really good, it does kind of look like half a bubble, like half a circle, but however it just... It looks better than a semicircle, what can I say? And you've obviously got your 5 door here, which obviously is sporty looking, just not as sporty as the 3 door, and obviously has a bit more practicality. It's kind of like how I said with the Toyota Yaris T-Sport. I say with the Toyota Yaris T-Sport, it's a bit more practical, and it does look a bit better than the 3 door, and frankly it's the same with this. But that's just my own personal judgement, that's all it is. The rear definitely works. You've obviously got a bit of a boot spoiler because it's a hatchback, you've got LED lights, you've got four exhausts which are huge and they're real so that is pretty cool. You've got some diffuser thing, I don't know if it's real or if it's fake, either way it looks really good. This yellow also works with this Audi, yellow is not a colour that really works with cars, however it looks really good with this and it's just so sporty looking. When it comes to the interior of this car, there's two points to make with this. So when it comes with just looking at it, I have to say it looks quite good. You obviously got your infotainment screen which you can see, you've got your circular air vents which look like jet engines, and you obviously got your fancy buttons because it's German and it's premium, so it's not gonna be cheap, cheap buttons like you get on something like, I don't know, an old Peugeot. So that's obviously a good point, and obviously the gauges look really nice. They're grey this time because it's the S version, so that also looks really cool. However, when it comes to a practicality standpoint, it's not so great. So a lot of the controls, when I say controls, I mean climate controls, are quite low down, which means that you have to look down in order to see them, and that is obviously distracting, and that's obviously not a good point. But that's it really, that's all there is to mention. When it comes to the performance of the Audi S1, it has a 2 litre inline 4 cylinder with a turbo. It has 227 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. It is an all wheel drive car, so just bear that in mind there is no front wheel drive like the standard A1 is, nor is there any rear wheel drive with this as well. 
So, depending on which one you get, whether it be the 3 door or the 5 door, the weight will differ by, I think, 25 kilograms if I'm not mistaken. So the 3 door weighs 1,315 kilograms and the 5 door weighs 1,340 kilograms. So a bit heavier but not too much, so that's alright. And Gearbox is a 6 speed manual, so what are you doing here? Take it out on a track, take it out on a B road, engage with the car. That's what manual is all about. Let's go drive it. Come on, let's do it. Come on. 0 to 60 is 5.6 seconds. Now, apparently, the sportback version is 0.1 seconds slower. Whether that's true or not, it doesn't really matter. There's no point mentioning it. It's 0.1 seconds. There's no point in that. And the top speed is the usual German limited to 155 miles an hour. So, when it comes to the practicality, this is where the Audi S1 does struggle quite a bit. So, Depending on which one you get, and I'm saying this quite a lot because it's true, the boot does differ in size. So if you get the normal 3 door, 210 litres, which is quite tiny frankly, it's not that great. If you get the 5 door sport back, you get an extra 60 litres at 270 litres, which is obviously better, but it's still not great. It's, yeah, it's not the best thing in the world. Now you do see these two little silver things there and no rear lights. Why is this? Well, because there's some sort of law somewhere that says that the rear lights cannot be on a moving panel. However, the lights are on a moving panel on this and some Audis as well. So they've had to fit these silver things, which are lights, so that when your boot is up, then you can see some lights and it's not against the law. When it comes to the rear seats, I have to say it is not that great again. So when it comes to sitting in the rear seats, the headroom is not that great because the roof line does slope quite a bit, so that's obviously not good. And you've obviously got really tight legroom because it is quite a small car, it's not a big wheelbase. Now obviously if you do get the 5 door, then that legroom has increased slightly, however it's still not the best out there, frankly. You could carry passengers if you wanted to, it is an alternative to a certain car, which I will put in the anything else section. Handling? Well, because it is based on a certain car, which is another car I will put in the anything else section, it is very composed. Now this mysterious car that I've not mentioned has some basic suspension on the rear, however this Audi has changed it, and so because it's more advanced, you obviously get better handling and it's obviously more fun as well. It is a joy to drive it, I can say that for sure. Now there is a system here. It's a four wheel drive system. So how does this four wheel drive system work? So most of the time it's split 60-40, which means that 60% of the power will be sent to the front wheels and 40% of the power will be sent to the rear wheels. Now this does make it front wheel drive biased and this is how it works most of the time. Now if need be, it will be 50-50, which means 50% of the power will go to the front and 50 to the rear. Now, if it is the 60-40 split, then understeer is quite prone, because obviously more power is being sent through the front wheels. However, because it is a four-wheel drive car, you do get plenty of grip. There is no doubt about that, so you do not need to worry in whatever surface you have. Just be careful, because if you do push it, you will get some understeer. When it comes to anything else, here comes the two cars. So the first one is this. It's the Volkswagen Polo. This is what the basic Audi A1 is based on, and the S1 is obviously changed slightly, but either way, it's a Polo, that's all it is. And, like I said with the practicality in the rear seats, this is the Audi TT. Now obviously, the Audi TT is less practical, and the Audi S1 is more practical. Even though the Audi S1 is still quite tight, it's definitely the one for choice when it comes to practicality. So if you want practicality and sportiness, then you obviously go for the S1. But either way, that concludes the review, what is the verdict? So the pros are, it has good performance, it has decent handling, including that 4 wheel drive grip that it has. The 3 door offers sporty looks, and the 5 door offers a slight practicality advantage. Obviously the 5 door does have its sporty looks, but it doesn't look as sporty as the 3 door, even though it does look better than the 3 door. It does have good exterior looks, and it's the same for the interior. However, there is a con to the interior as we well know, and speaking of cons, here it is. So, the legroom is tight, the headroom is also tight, the boot is pretty much small. The 5 door is obviously a bit better, so you go for that, but it's still not the best. Some interior controls are very low down, which means they are distracting. 
But either way, that concludes the verdict of the Audi S1. If you would like to check out my main reaction channel. Oh, bye bye. Or not. Darren, you're stupid. Yeah, we can see. Oh, oh. No, no, Darren. No, he's not okay. He's a bloody idiot. Then I will leave a link to that in the description below. Now, next week's car is this. If you know what this car is, leave a comment below. And speaking of comments, if you guys would like me to review a car, then you can also leave that in the comments below. And I'll obviously do that if there's enough information on it, and it will be on my list of cars to do. Anyway, I'll see you guys for whatever car this is next week. Peace.